tonight. We're still in our series, Drawn Out, talking about the life of Moses. And uh, Pastor Jason was uh, talking about we usually have, how we usually have an awesome word on Wednesday night. This is one of those messages that uh, makes me nervous. And like I'm like having to take deep breaths now as I stand here tonight. And when it makes me that nervous, just know this, that my husband is 10 times as nervous. <laughs> Amen. Because I preached him a little mini sermon. I usually don't even do that. I don't even tell him what I'm going to preach about. But I did do that last night. And uh, he, so then today on the way to church, he says, now go easy. Go easy on everybody. I said, look, you don't shoot the messenger. Amen. The, the word of God. Amen. It, it will, we, we say this, Pastor Lisa, you say this. You've heard people say this. It may cut going in but it's going to heal coming out. Amen? It's going to heal coming out. So I'm just believing that tonight. we got a great story for you tonight. Again, we're talking about the life of Moses. So we're going to be talking about a a pretty cool, not a cool story. It's it's a neat, it's an interesting story. I'm going to encourage you to go back and read it after you get home because you're going to want to. Amen? So uh, we're going to finish up this series probably the end of December. And then what we're going to do, I was praying about where to go from here. I think what we're going to do is as we finish up the life of Moses, the end of December, we're just going to kind of transition in January and go right into the life of Joshua. Amen. So that'll be good. I know you men have done a study or a Bible study, something on Joshua. So y'all will be able to relate to that. So I'm going to let y'all do the whole thing. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to talk about that from a woman's perspective. Amen. And uh, so that's going to be good. We'll come up with a cool title for Joshua. And uh, we're going to start that probably sometime in January. Amen? We looked last week. We talked about Moses last week. We looked at how he had a, always had, Moses always meeting with God. It's always meeting with God. We see that uh, in the life of Moses. And uh, all through Scripture, we see that God met with him. Uh, we talked about what a privilege it was to have an altar as a meeting place that we have now to meet with God, that we can come, and uh, this is a place where God meets man. This is a place where God pours out his blessings, amen. And then we've seen a manifestation of that Sunday morning. We talked about that so many times. That happens. You know, we talk about something on Wednesday night, and then a lot of times it's manifest. We talk about it, and then in the spirit it manifests right before our very eyes, and that certainly happened here Sunday morning at the altar as God poured his spirit out right here at this altar. Amen. Fire was poured out at the altar. Healing was poured out at the altar. Amen. Deliverance was poured out at the altar. Amen. Healing was poured out at the altar. We've seen that Sunday morning. Such a great day. We've gotten testimony all week of everyone that was so blessed by that altar service. Uh, Tonight, what I've chosen to do, I'm going to talk about the next couple of weeks probably, we're going to talk about the people that were closest to Moses. Okay, the people that were closest to Moses. If it's true that we're known by the company we keep, then it probably would benefit us to look at the company we're keeping. Amen? Look at, so let's, we're going to look at Moses, and we're going to look at the people that were closest to him. I'm going to have to fast forward a little bit in Scripture tonight to get to this story, but we're going to go all the way up to the book of Numbers, just skipping Leviticus. Amen? <laughs> Didn't do that on purpose. God just worked that out. Amen? <laughs> God is so good. Going to the book of Numbers, an interesting story, a very important person in the life of Moses. Go to the book of Numbers, chapter 12, chapter 12, and let's begin to read this story, and then we're going to uh, break it down a little bit. Y'all there? Are we there? Sound team, y'all there? Y'all got it? Y'all got, there we go. I want y'all got to see this story. We'll wait all night for them to get that up. Then Miriam, remember, Miriam's the sister of Moses, okay? Then Miriam and Aaron, Aaron is the brother of Moses. Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman that he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. So they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's some, that's some scary verses right there, y'all. And the Lord heard it. 
Now, the man Moses was very humble. King James says meek. Now, the man Moses was very meek, more than all the men who were on the face of the earth. Suddenly, the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, Come out, you three, from the tabernacle of meetings. So the three came out. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of a cloud and stood at the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both went forward. Then he said, Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. I speak with him face to face. King James says, mouth to mouth. Even plainly and not in the dark, saying, and he sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So the anger of the Lord was aroused against them, and he departed. And when the cloud departed from above the tabernacle, suddenly Miriam became leprous as white as snow. Then Aaron Aaron turned toward Miriam and said, and there she said, a leprous. Father, we love you tonight. We praise you. Thank you for your word tonight. Lord, we ask you to speak as only you can. Holy Spirit, come and minister and move. We thank you. We praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Going to look a little bit at Miriam tonight. Miriam, like I said, she's the older sister of Moses. She, Moses, and Aaron, they're all siblings, same mom, same dad. Amen. The name Miriam actually means bitterness. Means bitterness. Same in Greek, it's the same root word where we get the name Mary, Mara, or Mara. I remember, and I thought about this. Remember Naomi, if you know the word of God, Naomi. Her name was Naomi, but when she became bitter about her situation, she renamed herself Mara because that name actually means bitterness. Uh, We know Miriam was older because Miriam was actually, she was the sister who assured that Moses was found by Pharaoh's daughter. Remember when Moses, when he was first born, he was placed in a basket, put in a river, and his sister Miriam, she's the one that watched. She's the one that stood by and watched and made sure that he got safely to Pharaoh's daughter. Remember that? We talked about that as Moses was floating down the river in a basket. She's the one that stood there and followed him down the river to make sure he was okay. She's the one that goes to Pharaoh's daughter when Pharaoh finds the baby and says, Hey, I know a woman. She just had a baby, and she can can nurse this baby for you. She's a Hebrew, and she can nurse him. Of course, she was talking about her own mom, the mom of Moses. So Miriam was there to make sure all of those things happened. So Moses would have been back in the house with Miriam for three years, the first three years of his life, until he was weaned at three years old. So Miriam loved Moses from birth. Okay, she took care of him. She watched out for him. Like I said, they would have been in the same household for the first three years of his life. Uh, That sent a lot of siblings to this day. Maybe you're an older sibling. You know, they they have that feel that responsibility to take care of the younger siblings. We still see that today to take care of those younger siblings. Moses and Miriam, of course, they were separated. As Moses was three years old, he goes back. He's part of Pharaoh's household, so he goes back to Pharaoh's courts to royalty there. For 40 years, he's raised there, so they're separated during that time. Then, of course, we know Moses killed the Egyptian. Moses flees. He flees Egypt, and he goes away. He's gone for another 40 years before he comes back as the deliverer that God called him to be to the Israelites. Even though a lot of time passed during that time, both Miriam, both Miriam and Aaron were a big part of the ministry of Moses. They were right there. Of course, you know, Aaron was the one that God chose to speak for Moses because Moses says, I can't speak. Amen. Every every public speaker has said that at some point in time, that I can't do that, I can't do this. Moses said the same thing, so God sent him an Aaron. Aaron was the mouthpiece for Moses. Miriam, she became a woman of influence on the leadership team for Moses. Y'all with me? Miriam was there every time Moses goes to Pharaoh. Miriam was there to witness all the ten plagues of Egypt. Miriam was there the night the death angel passed over. Miriam was there to witness all the miracles that were performed by God through the hands of her brother. Okay, y'all with me? Miriam was there when the Israelite crossed the Red Sea. In Exodus 15, we read the scripture. I mean, we read it when we talked about that. Miriam is described as a prophetess. Because she leads the people in a victory song as they march across the Red Sea. So Miriam had great influence. Miriam had a voice. Miriam had a purpose. 
okay? Miriam had a call. She had an anointing on her life. She had influence. Women, women, like, women in the Old Testament got very little ink time, okay? We don't talk a lot about women. We don't hear, you hear a lot about the men, but you don't hear a lot about the women. But Miriam is listed along with four other women as being, women, or as being prophetesses. So, so she was special. She was special, called by God. It simply meant being a, prophet, being a prophetess. It meant she was used by God mightily, and she had great influence for good. Amen. That's my greatest prayer, that I would influence somebody, somehow, some way, in some way, form, or fashion, that I would influence someone to be more like Jesus, to live more, to be, to be a better person, to be a better mom, to be a better daughter, to be a better wife that I would have some influence in, in some woman's life or some man's life. You know what? I can do this. I can get through this. I can walk through this thing. I can walk this thing out. Amen? That's my greatest, greatest desire. Pastor Al, I'm sure that's yours too. So here we are in Numbers chapter 12. We see here that both Aaron and Miriam here, they have an issue with the woman that Moses has chose to marry. Okay? So they begin to complain about Moses' wife. Moses' wife, some people teach this. I have taught this this way before, and I believe that it is probably true to some degree, but some pre people believe that Aaron and Miriam had a problem with the skin color of the woman that Moses chose to marry. She was an Ethiopian, so yes, she was a black woman. No doubt about that, okay? So some people believe that. But as I study this, and I've actually studied before I hadn't had a chance to teach it until now, you dig a little deeper, you see, and, and of course, racism is always deeper than skin color. Yeah. Right. Amen. It's never, it's not that simple. Right. It's always deep. But as you dig a little deeper, you actually see a bigger issue here than racism. You see a heart issue. Yeah. You see a heart issue here. Amen. And so that's what I'm praying that we see tonight. Now, before I begin to break this down, I plead the blood of Jesus over everything I'll say. Amen? <laughs> because I love y'all. Y'all know that. But let me just speak right here a minute to, to our women. Okay? Because we're talking about a woman tonight. We're talking about Miriam. We have to be so careful, ladies. And I'm talking to men too, but I'm going to just kind of talk to women a minute. We say this a lot, but I so, so, so need... For every person, every woman in here to get this, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Death and life. Point your finger right here. It's say death and life is right here. It's right here. There is a miracle in your mouth. Or there is death in your mouth. Miriam was about to learn this the hard way. We're going to see a, a, a perfect picture of this tonight. But ladies, we have to be so careful about our mouths. We, we'll mess up something in a minute, and, I, and I'm just going to say, okay? We'll mess up something by placing our mouths on, in, putting our mouth in places we ain't got no business putting it in. We, we, we have this need, there's a need to lead. And women, men, you are for, forbidden to say amen during this little pep talk. <laughs> Just hold your tongue. <laughs> I know y'all want to shout me down, but don't you dare. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but we have this need to lead. We'll take over conversations. We'll take over areas in people's lives that we ain't even got no business being in. Have you ever found yourself in the middle of somebody else's business and you look and say, what am I, this thing got nothing to do with me? Why am I, you know? It all goes back to Eve. Let's blame it all on Eve. Amen. It all goes back to Eve. Amen. Eve decided she was tired of eating at the same old places. So what does she do? She takes, she takes over that situation and says, I'm going to choose where we're eating at tonight. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Sarah decided, I can't have a baby. Month after month, I can't have a baby. I can't have a baby. I can't have a baby. God's told her, you're going to have a baby. You're going to have dozens of babies. You're going to have 
you know, as many as the stars, the sands, and say, you're going to have kids, Sarah. But Sarah decides to take things in her own hands. So she goes to Abraham. She's, look, I can't have a child. Go take Hagar. You know, we know her. We love her. Take her and have a kid with her. And so we see birth from that, a whole generation of rebels, even to this day that we still deal with. Rebecca, Isaac's wife. Isaac's wife. She, didn't, she, couldn't let Jacob, she couldn't let Isaac handle Jacob and Esau. Just let the man lead. Just let, if he messes up, that's on him. Let the man lead. But she gets involved. She gets involved. She tricks him into giving the blessing to the wrong son. Jezebel, she could not. She could not stand by and let Ahab lead. No, she had to take over. She had to take over. She had to be in control. She had, for some reason, for some reason this where she had to try to prove that she was superior, that she was smarter, she could do it, and she didn't need anybody to help her. She had to prove this. A Jezebel spirit submits to no one. A Jezebel spirit seeks control. A Jezebel spirit only befriends those whom she can manipulate and control. A Jezebel spirit is haughty and hates humility. Hates humility. I believe God saw an ugly spirit in Miriam. I believe he saw an ugly spirit in me. Possibly a, possibly a Jezebelian spirit in Miriam. So he dealt with it sternly. He dealt with it sternly. Ladies, when we get this type of attitude, and let's face it, we've all had it. We've all dealt with it. We've all dealt with this. When we get this type of attitude, which we're treading on dangerous territory, it's important for us to submit ourselves to God every single day. Ask him, ask him to keep us in our proper place, to guard our tongues, to cover every word that we say about someone or to someone. It's so important that we do that. Miriam speaks against Moses' wife, but the real issue, again, if you study this, the real issue here, again, is an age-old problem of pride and jealousy. It's pride and jealousy, and I'm going to show you what I mean in just a minute. Verse 2, Miriam says, Has the Lord only spoken to Moses? Doesn't he also speak to us? Doesn't he speak to me? After what she's basically saying, ain't I just as good as Moses? God speaks to me too. She, she exalts herself right up there with Moses. She said, God speaks to me. And one of the scariest words I brought your attention to is she, the verse 2b says this, and the Lord heard it. And the Lord heard it. When you put your mouth on the man of God, God hears it. God hears it. Pray, saints, pray. No. I could tell you some stories right here. I could tell you some stories right here about people that have put their mouth on the man of God and some not so happy endings. I'm talking true stories, real life stories, but I'm not going to take time to do that. But let me, again, just issue a word of warning to you, women and men tonight. We do not touch God's anointed. We do not touch God's anointed. Amen. David, in all, all of his rigmarole with Saul and the evil Saul, all that Saul did to him, David refused to put his mouth or his sword against Saul. He would not do it. He would not do it because he did not want to lose the anointing of God. He knew that the anointing of God was all about alignment and getting in line with God's proper uh, proper alignment and the anointed flow, anointing flowed down. And so he knew he had to stay in alignment with God. Amen. So what we got to look at in this story, what we got to see in this story is what had just happened. We're in verse 12, Miriam and Aaron, they're talking about Moses. They're talking about his wife. She's married an Ethiopian woman. People are walking out on me. I don't understand it, but y'all, I'm good. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, what we got to look at is what had just happened. We're in Numbers tw chapter 12. In chapter 11, God had just come, just come to Moses, and he tells Moses, he said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to choose 70 elders in Israel. Moses is trying to do everything on his own, so God comes to him, and he says, look, I want you to choose seven elders 
in Israel, and I want you to place them over different areas of ministry, you know, that need to be done. I want you to put these people in leadership. Know this, when you try to bring structure and you try to bring order to something, look out. Because the enemy does not like structure and the enemy does not like order. Amen? He likes chaos. He likes chaos. The enemy will fight structure and he will fight order. God is a God of order. Again, when things get in order and things get lined up, the anointing of God can flow. Y'all with me? Y'all with me? The anointing of God can flow. And the enemy don't like that. He wants it to be chaos. He wants it to be out of order. That's his environment. So the enemy, when you get ready to bring order and you begin to bring structure to anything, you can do that in your own house. Look out. The enemy's going to fight that because he knows things are going to flow better when you get your house in order. Amen? So God tells Moses, I want you to put everything, I want you to get things in perspective, get some order, get 70 elders. He says, and when you do, I'm going to come down to them and I'm going to give them the same spirit that I've given you. Awesome. I love that. Give you that same spirit. Guess who was not part of the 70? Miriam and Aaron were not part. So what do they do? The same thing that we do. When we think that somebody done us wrong or we didn't, we're, we're not part of this and we're not part of that. We got the bad end of the deal. So what do we start doing? We start doing this. We start running our mouth in places that we ain't got no business Running our mouth. The bad thing and the sad thing for Miriam here is she messed with the she messed with God's Moses, y'all. She messed with the wrong man. She thought, well, he's just my brother. She had no idea what she was talking about. This was God's man. This was God's chosen man. He said in verse three, describe Moses as the meekest man in all the face of the earth. In verse seven, he said, My servant Moses is faithful in all my house. In all my house, Miriam, because of her disagreement about how Moses is running the camp, she steps out of her role. She steps in her brother's role. She said, am I not just as good as Moses? And when she said that, and when she said, God speaks to me as well, when she exalted herself on the same level as Moses, she crossed the line. She crossed the line. She put herself right up there with Moses, and it was on. And it was on what we have here in this story with Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, like I said, is an alignment problem. It wasn't a racism problem. It wasn't a a female rivalry. She just didn't like his wife. No, this was much deeper than that. Moses, who was uh, Miriam, who was older than Moses, she knows she was there when he was born. She knows she took care of him when he was born. She knows she was there when he floated down the river. She was there to make sure that a nurse, that uh, Moses got back to his mom and she nursed him. In her mind, Miriam is responsible for his success. I'm the reason he's where he's at today because of me. Because of me. Without me, he wouldn't be where he's at today. He wouldn't be where he's at today. And pride begins to build. And we all know what happens. We know what goes before pride. What goes after pride is the fall. It's the fall. Reminds me of a scripture. I couldn't help but think about the scripture today where it says, Jesus says that he could do no mighty works in his own town, in his own hometown. The reason he couldn't do is because people there grew up with him. They knew him. They knew who he was. He th- he's not any better than me. He grew up the same way I grew up. Amen. He grew up the same way I grew up. So he, who does he think he is? Who does he think he is? And that's why the anointing could not flow in his own hometown because there was no alignment, there was no honor, and there was no respect for the man of God. Amen. Amen. Y'all with me? Yes. Whoo, y'all. I got to get this off me. When Miriam, when Miriam didn't get the high position as one of the 70, she's ticked. She begins to complain about Moses' wife, but Moses' wife was just a smokescreen for the real problem. The real problem was pride, and the real problem was jealousy. Something we've had to realize about people, about close friends, even about family. People are a lot of times, they're good with working beside you, but they will not sit under you. Because that takes humility. That takes humility. 
There are people, there are people here today in Central that cannot be used of God because they cannot submit to the proper authority. And so therefore, they cannot get in alignment and therefore the anointing can't flow and therefore they can't be used by God. Or this happens, they fake it, but don't you know it? Don't you know, can't you see it? Can't you see it when they do it anyway, but they don't like it? Jesus. Miriam, Miriam's like, who does he think he is? He's no better than me. I used to change his diapers. He was at home with me for three years. I took care of him. There was no honor. There was no respect. Therefore, there was no anointing. God heard Miriam. God heard Miriam. He goes to Moses. He says, look, I want to see all three. Moses, Miriam, Aaron, I want to see all three of y'all right now in my office. Amen? So I'm going to paraphrase the rest of this, okay? The Lord comes down. He comes down in the cloud. He meets all three of them. They're all three standing there. Moses, Miriam, Aaron, they're all the brothers, sisters. They're standing there. God points at Miriam. He points at Aaron. He said, you two, come here. Don't you know they were shaking in their little sandals? <laughs> Woo! Them little strapped on sandals. Well, better. <laughs> Woo! God said, listen here. God said, listen here. I have made, this is God, y'all. This is God. He said, I have made myself known to prophets many times in dreams and in visions. He said, but my servant Moses, your brother, I talked to him face to face. I talked to him face to face. Me and him meet on a regular basis, Brother Ray. He's meeting with him all the time. He said, I speak to him mouth to mouth. Faith, he is a faithful man of God. He is meek. He is a servant of mine that I have chosen. I have meetings with him on a regular basis. And for the life of me, God's talking to him. He says, for the life of me, I can't understand why you would take it upon yourself to speak against him. How you are not afraid to speak against him is what God didn't understand. How can you not be afraid to speak against him? When you've seen the mighty works that have been done at his hand, you have seen what I have done. You have seen the, the miracles that have taken place. And you dare to speak against him? God is upset. God is upset. He says, look, I'm going to leave you now. And the consequences, they're going to come. But you brought them on yourself. Brought them on yourself. Verse 10, it says, when the cloud departed, Miriam was standing there white with leprosy. Leprosy was a death sentence. There was no cure. She's white, as, she's white with leprosy. One thing you do notice if you read this, and you might not understand it, one thing you notice, only Miriam, not Aaron, is struck with leprosy. Aaron's not struck. This leads us to believe that Marion was the, Miriam, I keep saying Miriam, I'm sorry y'all from saying Miriam, Miriam is the one doing all the trash talk. Aaron is doing what a lot of us do. He's being quiet. He's being quiet. He's sitting there. You ever heard silence is agreement? Aaron's being quiet. I've said it before. When someone's constantly calling you, they're talking about somebody, they're slamming somebody, they're talking about the pastor, they're talking about the pastor's wife. They're talking about the pastor's wife. You better speak up. <laughs> Y'all better say something. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't you sit there quiet saying, mm-hmm, I know it. No. Don't you picture that's what Aaron was doing. Miriam was trash talking. Aaron's like, I know it. I know it. I don't understand it either. Right, right. So he didn't get to leprosy, but he got called on the carpet. Amen. He got called on the carpet. But she's there. But anyway, if, you know, don't you stand. You don't have to sit quietly by and let someone, you speak up. Had Aaron spoke up, had Aaron spoke up when Miriam started, one thing, he wouldn't have gotten called on the carpet. He would not have gotten called on the carpet. Look at what happens. Look at what happens. I got to read the rest of the story. It says this, verse 11. Y'all ready? Yes. And Aaron said to Moses, remember the clouds lifted, Miriam standing there white with leprosy. So Aaron said to Moses, oh my Lord, please do not lay this sin on us in which we have done foolishly and in which we have sinned. 
Please do not let her be as one dead whose flesh is half consumed when he comes out of his mother's womb. So Moses cried out to the Lord saying, Please heal her, O God, I pray. Then the Lord said to Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, would she not be shamed seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp seven days, and afterwards she may be received again. So Miriam was shut out of the camp seven days, and the people did not journey till Miriam was brought in again. And afterward, the people moved from Hazeroth and camped in the wilderness of Paran. Aaron goes to Moses. He says, hey, brother, listen, we messed up. We shouldn't have done that. We said some things we shouldn't have said. But look, we don't want Miriam to die because of this. And so Aaron pleads with Moses. He said, I need you to go to God. I need you to intercede on her behalf. And I need you to go. God listens to you. I need you to go. So again, we see Moses. We seen it a couple of weeks ago. Moses became an intercessor for Aaron. Remember that? When Aaron messed up and acted crazy, Moses interceded for him. We see Moses intercede for Miriam another time, and God heals her. God heals her. He prays for Miriam that God would spare her life. And then there in verse 14, it's kind of a strange verse. I wanted to talk about it just a minute if I could. And uh, I'm trying to hurry. In the Old Testament, where God says this, God said, he said, then the Lord said to Moses, if her father had but spit in her face, would she not be shamed seven days? So in the Old Testament, what would happen if a, if a child had done something of, Lisa, you and I were talking about this a couple of weeks ago. Um, if, if a daughter had done something that was shameful, and we probably all have done that or have had daughters that do something shameful, what a father would do, he would take her out publicly and spit in her face. Spit in her face, and this would shame her. This would humiliate her. And then she would be put away. She was to be put away for seven days. Y'all know how you get mad at your kids, and you spank them, and you say, to go to your room. I don't want to see you the rest of the night. Has anybody ever done Do y'all still do that? Yes. Well, your kids, if you don't, you need to. <laughs> Amen. I don't want to see you the rest of the week. So this is kind of, everything comes from, everything's biblical, y'all, it is. You can find everything, you can find some crazy stuff in the Bible that we still do today, and we don't know why we do it. So this is what happened. This is why God said, he said, so for seven days, she's going to be shamed. She's going to be humiliated. She's going to be shut out of the camp. She's going to be shut out of the camp. He healed her of the leprosy. The leprosy was healed, I believe, immediately. The leprosy was healed, but she was still put out of the camp for seven days. And so all the people knew it because the Bible says as she was put out, the people couldn't move. They couldn't go anywhere. They had to stay still for seven days because everybody knew Miriam had messed up. Miriam had messed up. Miriam suffered the humiliation and the shame of that for a whole week. I always say this, there's always consequence. God will forgive you of the sin, but there are consequences to sin that we don't always get out of. Amen? So what we see here is so amazing to me because thousands and thousands of years later, we still deal with this on our daily life. There's a spiritual downward spiral when bitterness comes in, when pride comes in, when jealousy comes in. We, we see this in this one chapter. We see what happens with bitterness. The first thing you see with bitterness is division. It's division. When we get bitter like Miriam, did with Moses, we build walls that separate, that separate and divide. We try to hide it. We keep coming to church. We keep going to family socials, but everybody knows it's there. The bitterness is there. The anger is there. Amen? And everybody knows it. You can't hide it. You try to cover it up, but you can't. So there's a division that comes. That's what it does. Sin separates, y'all. It separates. So division comes. The second thing we see, we see God's displeasure Bitterness grieves the Holy Spirit. It grieves the Holy Spirit. God is never, ever, if he does, you let me know, never going to come to you and say, you know what, you were right, and they were wrong, and I don't blame you. You don't need to let that go. He's not going to do it. He's not going to do it. He He never has. Ephesians 4, 33, 32 says this, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Let all bitterness, 
It tells you, it says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. And it tells you how not to grieve the Holy Spirit. It says, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you. That's how you're not going to grieve the Holy Spirit. When you uh, are evil, or bitter, and anger, and speaking evil, you're grieving the Holy Spirit of God in your life. It says, be kind, be tenderhearted one to another, even as God is, is, has forgiven you. Now, was Moses right? Was, did Moses make some mistakes? Was he the perfect leader? Did he do everything right? Did he choose all the right people and make all the right decisions? Was his wife, was she the best choice for him? Was he right to do that? We don't know. We don't know. But that was for God to deal with. That wasn't for Miriam to deal with. That was God's business. That was not Miriam's business. If, if Moses messed up, guess what? God met with him every week. I think he'd have told him, don't you? I think he'd have dealt with him. He did not need Miriam. He did not need Miss, Jez, Miss, Miss Miriam <laughs> to come in here and say, you know what, God, I, I'm going I'm to handle this. You know, you get out of the way, he's messed up. This was, this was God's business. It was not Miriam's place. He was a man. Of, Miriam could have easily said, she could have easily said, look, I don't agree with what you've done. I don't understand with what you've done. All I know, all I know, I know you meet with God. I know you talk to God. I'm going to trust that you heard from God about this decision. And I just want you to know I'm here if you need anything. That sounds easy, don't it? Why can't we do it? Why can't we do it? Because the enemy don't want you to do it. Because that brings healing. That brings healing. When we do that, that takes humility. And that takes putting self aside, and that takes knocks down pride. And the enemy don't want you to do that. And he'll fight you with everything to stop you from doing that because he don't want peace. He don't want you to have peace in your life. He don't want that. The third thing we see is physical sickness. When bitterness comes, physical sickness. Miriam physically was sick. She was physically struck with leprosy. But in reality, isn't that what bitterness does? Isn't that what it does? It makes you physically. You've seen somebody in their life. We all know somebody. They're physically sick, and what it is, it's bitterness, and it's eating them from the inside out, and it causes physical sickness, physical uh, infirmity in their body because bitterness is nothing more than stress. Stress is one of the worst things for your entire body. Stress will wreak havoc on your body. We talked about Naomi, how Naomi renamed herself Mara because she was bitter, when, when Naomi went back to her hometown, because of the bitterness that she had in her life, the women didn't even recognize her. They said, is that Miriam? She don't even look the same. No, because she had so much bitterness in her life. It had changed her look. It had changed a look, her look. Amen. Do y'all, y'all see how the enemy works? Do you see the enemy in all this, intertwined in this, keeping things stared up? Give him no place, the Bible says. Give him no place. James tells us God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Gives grace to the humble. 90%, I dare say that 90% of bitterness problems are in one of these three categories. Think about someone now, and you probably all can think of someone you're a little bit bitter toward, or one of these three categories, someone really close to you, someone in authority, or someone in your family. All three of these were true for Miriam. It was someone close to her, it was someone in authority, and it was her family. And then here's, here's the huge, here's it, y'all. Here's, here's what I want to tell you. This is all I want to tell you tonight. Y'all only going to remember the last thing I said anyway. Here's the huge, huge, huge icing on this huge cake of pride right here. It's found in verse 15. I already read it. And Miriam was shut out of the camp for seven days, and the people... We're at a standstill. The people were at a standstill. Know this. Pride, bitterness, and jealousy will bring you to a standstill in your walk with God. It will bring you to a standstill in your walk with God. How many people, again, do you know today that are at a standstill spiritually because of pride, because of envy, and because of jealousy, and because of their inability to align their self with authority because they just, they just simply could not humble their self enough to do it. And the bitterness has to be dealt with for you to move on. 
The anger has to be dealt with for you to move. It will bring you to a standstill. The anger, the pride has to be dealt with. You see, Miriam had influence. She had influence in lives of women. She had a voice. She, she was leading people in worship. She's brought to a standstill. She's brought to a standstill in her, in her life, in her ministry. Y'all, it's okay to be meek. It's okay to be meek. Being meek is not being weak. Okay? Meek people meet with God. Meek people, humble. When I tell you meek, I'm talking humble. Meet with God. Meek people guard their tongues. Meek people are okay with not having to say the last word. They're okay with that. Meek people are okay with not having all the attention on them. Meek people are submitted to leadership. Meek people mind their own business. Jesus said the meek shall inherit the earth. Amen. I heard a saying many, many years ago. When I say many, I'm talking like 30 years ago. If you think meek is being weak, then try being meek for a week. If you think meek is being weak, Try being meek for a week. Because the truth is, it don't take a strong, a strong woman of God to cut somebody out. It don't take a strong man of God to bless everybody out and to lose his temper and punch a hole in the wall. That don't take a strong man. As a matter of fact, that takes a weak man. As a matter of fact, that takes a weak woman. It don't take a strong person just to mind their own business and, and to take care of their own household. That takes a strong person. That takes the opposite. It takes a strong person, a strong man, a strong woman of God to say, you know what, I'm going to control my tongue. I'm going to control my actions. Amen. I'm going to pray for those that despitefully use me. Amen. That takes a strong person. I'm going to bless those that curse me. That takes a strong person. Amen. We don't hear from Miriam after this. We don't hear from Miriam for 40 years. 40 years, the Israelites, they're almost ready to go into the promised land. Almost ready to go into the promised land. Look at Numbers, guys. Numbers chapter 20, verse 1. Look what it says. This is the next time we hear from Miriam in Scripture. Then the children of Israel, a whole congregation, came into the wilderness of Zin in the first month. And the people stayed in Kadesh. And Miriam died there. And was buried there. What did Miriam miss? 40 years? What did she miss? What blessings did she miss? What miracles did she miss? How many people's lives could she have affected if she'd only been able to control? If she'd only been able to get past the pride, get past the root of bitterness, get past the jealousy? get past the jealousy hundreds of years later hundreds of years later y'all go to that Micah scripture Micah there's a prophet by the name of Micah he's leading a group of people again he's trying to keep the people free and Micah the prophet Micah I love the book of Micah when we studied it in Ruth 66 he records a conversation that he has with God and I want y'all to read this conversation that he has with God. He says this. God says, hear, O you mountains, the Lord's complaint, and you strong foundations on the earth. For the Lord has a complaint against his people, and he will contend with Israel. O my people, what have I done to you, and how have I wearied you? Testify against me. For I brought you out of the land of Egypt. I redeemed you from the house of bondage. This is the Lord talking to Micah. And I sent you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. God could have easily written Miriam out of the story. He could have easily written her off. He could have excluded her name. Right here in this conversation with Micah hundreds and hundreds of years later. He could have excluded her name. 
But God is not a God who holds a grudge. He's a God who holds grace. He's a God who holds grace. And the fact that God Almighty mentioned and includes Miriam's name in the list of leaders along with Moses and along with Aaron tells us that God did not write her off and God had not forgotten her. He had not forgotten her and God considered her mighty in his deliverance plan in her deliverance plan. I say this every week. I say it every month. I say it every day in my own life, in my own prayer time. God is a God of second chances. He is a God of second chances. He, we read this and we think God is so harsh. He's not harsh. He's holy. He's holy. He's not a grudge holder. He's a grace giver. He's a grace giver. Romans 3, 23 says, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Miriam lived in a time when she had to suffer the shame. She had to suffer the humiliation. She had to go through it. But through Jesus, there's no shame and there's no guilt. Amen. There's no condemnation in those that love him. There's an abundance of forgiveness flowing in our lives and for us today. Give him praise for that tonight. Amen. I, of course, as I'm closing, I know I've been long tonight. I challenge you to live a life that is holy and acceptable. That's your reasonable service, the Bible tells us there. But I also want to remind you tonight that you are not forgotten. You are not forgotten. That bad season that you had, that difficult situation, that difficult circumstance or situation that you were in, God knows all about it. He knows all about it, but He still loves you. He still cares for you, and He has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten you. Father, we love you tonight. We praise you, and we thank you, Lord, that you and you alone are a mighty God. We thank you, Father, for your word, and we thank you, Lord, that it can cut going in, Father, but I pray for healing to come as we pull that sword out, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for every person in this room tonight. Lord, I thank you. You had them here for a reason. You had them here for a purpose, to hear the word of the Lord tonight. And I pray they heard with spiritual ears. Father, help us to be more like you in everything. Lord, help us to guard our tongues, Father, that the enemy would not use our tongues to bring death into a life of anyone. Most importantly, not death in our own lives. We thank you for that. We praise you for that, Lord. I pray as we leave this place tonight, we can leave under the power and the anointing of your mighty and holy word. We give you praise. We give you honor. And we give you glory for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God praise tonight.